ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NJPW Poodle Wrestle Review. I am your co-host on your seat right over here. It's the show Poodle herself. It's Melball. How you doing, Melball? <laughs> I am doing great, Andre. I, right before we went on live here, I saw a very large, beautiful looking standard poodle with a very show cut there were pom-poms everywhere pom-poms on the butt pom-poms on the ankles it was glorious it was great it looked like a small fuzzy cow <laughs> <laughs> how are yes. you doing my friend uh, i'm doing great i was hoping you were going to say something because i really didn't want people thinking that, that i think you're a poodle so <laughs> i mean if my hair was like if i let it out right now it would probably lion king up and i could probably make myself look like a poodle yeah, but <laughs> I just was hoping you would explain that because I was like, I don't want to sound like a dirt. You're calling me a dog, sir, huh? You're calling me a dog. <laughs> the prettiest Rude. of the dogs, the poodle, you know, I guess. The prettiest just... bitch you'd ever meet, right? <laughs> I, I didn't say that. Let's we'll, we'll say I did not say that. <laughs> it's the right term. It's the correct use of the term, if we're being honest. But we're getting off track here. We're here to talk about wrestling, Andre. But you wrestling! have to tell me what you're doing also. Um. I'm doing good. I'm my core is sore and it's only going to get more sore because I worked out with a local independent wrestler, my trainer, Rich King this morning. Um, and I'm dying on the, on the mid, on the inside, I'm dying on the inside, but the inside, I mean my core, cause I'm already feeling it in my sides. I'm just sitting here and I'm just like uncomfortable as hell. And like when I was sitting here, was it Wednesday night when we did our, when we did our live show, I had done, Russian twists uh, earlier in the day, and I felt exactly the same way. And I'm just like, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I told you, I told you from experience when you first start those crazy core things, it's just going to hurt to breathe for a while because you're activating them. What are they called? Obliques? Activating your obliques and and everything like that. I think that's the side ones. Um, I think so. Yeah. I remember when I started, like, I had trouble sleeping because just breathing would hurt. Oh, yeah. Um, This too shall pass, my friend. This too shall pass. I missed my workout with him last week due to work schedule changes. But the week Mm -hmm. before, the next two nights, that night and the night after, were hard to sleep. Because Mm -hmm. my my midsection hurt so badly. So, yeah. Don't you, ladies and gentlemen. It is worth it. It is. Um, my shirts are getting insanely loose. I mean, you can see it. It's in my shirt here. The shoulders are mm-hmm. starting to fall a bit. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm wearing I'm wearing four XLs now, which is making me super happy because I was a five XL guy. Wow. Um, now I've got four XLs that like they're not loose on me yet, but they fit, so I'm happy. Yay! Working our way down there. We'll have you there. in your United Empire clothing his shirts comfortably in no time. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're that's it that's it for our catch up it's time to get into what you've tuned in for mm-hmm. the wrestling before we do that i want to thank each and every one of you guys we appreciate all the great support you guys give us here um please keep liking the video subscribing to the channel commenting down below um sharing it out to all your friends family enemies strangers whatever um and also don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can alert every time i drop a new video Hello. Uh, I'm downstairs. I'm not going all the way upstairs for that. No, I'm good. Um, You're sore. You're sore. It's sore. understandable. I'm too, I'm too sore. Uh, and if you are, <laughs> and if you're listening to us in audio form on Sunday Night's Main Event, please uh, go over to SundayNightsMainEvent.com. Give them a like and a follow uh, on all the podcast catchers. Um, like you can comment on Apple Music and Google Play. Throw them a comment. Throw them a five star rating. We really would appreciate it. Even if you hate us, give us a five star rating and then say. We love everything except for Andre and Melba. I'm fine with that. Just give give uh, Sunday's main event a five star rating because we love those guys. We appreciate all the great support they are giving us. Uh, so thank you very much. And yeah. so we're gonna get into this. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna talk some February fourth and February fifth of the New Beginning Tour. Um, oh, I'm on the wrong graphic to start with. I'm going to pop back to that. That's the end of my slides. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad at my job, but whoever said was... there we go. <laughs> well, wrong button. I keep hitting the wrong go. buttons, and it's it's messing me up. So yeah, we're gonna kick glorious, it off. Glorious, glorious So before this match even happened, mm-hmm. 
there was like an abrupt cut in, and it's the War Dogs beating down Jeff Cobb. Um, and they're they're beat because Jeff Cobb uh, got a thigh strain. I want to, I think it was. They announced. I think so. Um, and he had to be removed from his match with uh, Alex, Alex Coughlin. Yeah. Um, and Ocon was announced as beat up, but, but the War Dogs are beating the piss out of him. And then Young Lions start to get involved, and they beat the piss out of the Young Lions. And they're just, and David Finley's just just having the time of his life because he's a dickhead. Mm-hmm. But yeah. <laughs> he's not, he's not a. Well, he is being a bit of a dick, but but this is what we expect out of Bullet Club leadership at this point. Mm. And like, especially with the last year of build, I mean, he was pretty quiet. I mentioned it a few times. He was he was pretty quiet while building the the War Dogs last year. I think he was trying to build something pretty credible to be able to step out with. And now he's built them into former tag team champions. So now it, we're, I think we're going to really start to see that evolution of David Finley's attitude and, and this new persona of the Bullet Club leader. Yeah. I, I, and again, I very much liking this David Finley. I, I enjoyed the way mm-hmm. he was building himself last year. And I'm enjoying him stepping out of the shadows with a title win. He's making himself very prominent, and it's like, mm-hmm. I am the guy. I am the measuring stick. You cannot beat me. That is the way he's going. So I'm mm-hmm. very much liking him in what he is doing here. Mm-hmm. Same. Very I much just, so. I just don't like who he's beating up because I'm a big United Empire fan, as you can see. But the he's watching a video, the banner behind me says United Empire on it. Mel Ball's wearing a Catch Two t shirt. So, and I've got I've got one of those too. It just doesn't fit me super well yet. Yet. <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting. We're that. getting there. So we're gonna jump over ten man tag team match for the undercards. We're just gonna go through. We're gonna give. Our, I'm just gonna talk about the finish, uh, mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, we're not gonna go deep detail into the undercard matches. Um, it's El Desperado, Oleg Bolton, Shota Umino, and Togi Makabe, and Yoshihashi taking on House of Torture's Evil, Ren Narita, Show, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and Yujiro Takahashi with the Dick. <laughs> So at the, at the end of the match, the dick is choking Makabe with Makabe's own chain. But he fights mm-hmm. him off, dispatches a couple of members of House of Torture, and he ends up slamming Evil and is heading to the corner to go up to do the King Kong knee drop. But Cho gets up on the apron, has the wrench, he ends up distracting the referee, and Kanemaru slides in. Santori surprise, whiskey to the whiskey to the eyes. And uh, mm-hmm. Evil hits everything as Evil to Makabe, and he gets the win. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Desperado ended up chasing Show to the back after, uh, and House of Torture attacked Umino after the match. It was with Evil and Umino's upcoming uh, Never Title match, and mm-hmm. Umino uh, Evil's like in the ring with the title, but he keeps dropping it. And then he picks it up and he goes to the floor after Umino slides in the ring, and he starts spray painting the fucking belt black. Mm-hmm. The piece of shit. I'm like, I. I I really like the look of the Never title. It's one of those ones I actually really enjoy. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you bastard. Yeah. And then Shota chases him to the back and like throws a table at the entranceway. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 funny because Shota is all about the people, but like when he gets to that point of like anger, he don't care. He just yeets everything. Um couple interesting feuds happening in in this match um i thought that the the feud between desperado and show continuing to to be very prevalent to me i felt it was actually more on display than whatever's going on between shota and evil Mm -hmm. um and show i really don't know how i feel about this character because i really love show's in-ring ability but the acting, like you can see by the picture, he's he's over dramatic, and he's the most over dramatic person in this picture, and that's how he's performing. You know what could be just a oh, face is a face for him, and it's weird. Like it gets to a point that it's cringe. Um, this match, he was very very unhinged, very acting erratically, and just ha ha ha. Like he was looking legitimately insane. Mm. And I'm trying to figure out is that the character he's kind of going for? 
I'm not entirely sure. For me, it's missing a mark. Um, but I feel like with Desperado, it's working because we can't get that type of erraticness out of Desperado because he's wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. We don't get that range of facial expression. So I feel like Show is kind of doing the reacting for both of them. And I feel in this feud that it actually works. Um, but Red Rita kind of being a little pushed to the side when I thought originally him and Shota were going to kind of have a a thing. It's like they started to continue having a feud and then Evil has just kind of like shoved him to the side and I, mean, I know my time. I don't care to see it. I no. don't know why it's happening because we have the Never Open Weight title on Evil and Shota should be going after a title. But I, maybe it's just because I don't think that Evil is a credible leader in House of Torture anymore, um, that that it's bothering me that he's getting a little bit more of a spotlight. Um, last thing I wanted to mention is Bil Bolton Oleg was a beast for his team in this match. That is it the gut wrench hold that he does where he just yeah. flips him back and forth? The Shayna Baszler type, Baszler's like swing around. It's like, oh, like a gut wrench swing around. Oleg doing it, yeah. but just making it look like just the easiest thing in the world. Oh, so, so good easy so good i really like that and he did that um who did he do that on did i write down i didn't write down who he did it on. oh show it was show he did it on in this mm -hmm. match i think the next match was um somebody else that he did it on but um yeah i i feel like bolton oleg he's starting to come starting to make those steps. He's starting to come out of his shell a little bit. Oddly enough, I think it took Oscar Loibe and um, Yuto Nakashima going on excursion for him to feel comfortable enough stepping up and starting to perform. Um, and now he's got to kind of be that leader because he's kind of like the more veteran, I guess, young lion of this bunch. So yeah. I'm very happy to see him stepping up in this one and having a little bit more personality, having a little bit more fun. And I feel like the team that he was working with worked with him very, very well to help put him over. Mm -hmm. Very much so. I I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of, of, of Bolna. Like he, I think this dude, he's got a, a, big, a good future. Um, 100%. They're going to build him up like a Brock Lesnar almost. Like not obviously the bad mm -hmm. stuff about the guy, but like they're going to have him be that like – Eventually turn him into that just like beast of a man that just just runs right. through people. That's what he's mm -hmm. once he comes back from discursion. That's what he's going to be. He's going to be that like the next big thing of New Japan kind of guy. That's what he's going to mm -hmm. be. And he's slowly unlocking that personality. I really like seeing it. Oh, oh, very much so, very much mm -hmm. so. So I move on. Uh, before we get to the next match, they, the video played. Uh, they announced that Mina Shirakawa will challenge Mayu Watani for the IWGB Women's Championship on the February twenty yes. third show. Uh, for mm -hmm. the beginning, I'm so excited. Mina Shirakawa yeah. is the IWGP Women's Champion. That's all. That's the only. That's the only outcome I, I that is can be reality is Mina Shirakawa winning this spot. That's the only outcome. That is the only outcome. I am hoping for this as well because, gosh dang, Mina Shirakawa has been the Kenta of stardom in the last little while. Kenta has been really kind of getting the short end of the stick. Mina Shirakawa, same thing. Um, every time she she's almost like a has a donut dangled in front of her nose. And right when she's about to grab it, it's yanked away. She's just following it throughout her career. I don't like that. She has worked so hard losing, uh, leaving. Cosmic Angels, forming Club Venus, having Club Venus pretty much abandon her and having to reform a new faction. She's been working so hard and doing it all with that pretty smile. Mm -hmm. um, she deserves this title and she deserves a good title run and she deserves to be traveling, um, defending this title. But what I think is going to be the greatest part of this is that the NJPW fans who don't know her get to see her intro dance. So good. Yay. Yeah, yes. let's go Hope Mina. I'm here at night. That would be great. Let's go, Mina. Mina. So we move on. Uh, six band tag. It's G O D, uh, El Fantasmo mm -hmm. and Hikuleo teaming up with uh, Tomolaki. I almost said Tamatanga. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, Tomolaki Hanma. It's a little different. Different Ma at the end. 
different uh, at the end. You know, Tomaki Hanma taking on the Bullet Clubs, Chase Owens, Kenta, and Taiji Ishimori, the, the pit bull. You know, mm-hmm. the uh, tiny pit bull. Yeah, the fan dressed up as Kenta by the entrance. We got a Kenta. So cute. And so Kenta, cute. Kenta even gave him the too sweet. I mean, you have to at that point. You oh, have yeah. to. Because even if you're a heel, it's like, come on, dude. <laughs> so, big announcement. ELP was joining commentary later tonight. But the big announcement for the New Japan Cup. Gino Gamino will be on the English commentary for the entire tour. Let's go. Doki Toki. I can't wait. I can't wait for you, Gino again. Yeah, I'm going to freak out the first time I hear him say Doki Choki because you know that's going to come out. You know it's going to come out, and I've been waiting for it. I love that Kevin and um, Chris Charlton, they try. Mm -hmm. Chris Chris Charlton tried recently. Um, but man, nothing beats a good Gino jokey jokey. Nope. Um, <laughs> I, I got one highlight in this match before I get oh. before I go to the finish. Um, Ishimori getting ELP in the tree of woe runs up for the drop kick and then just stops in front of him, climbs up, and he starts doing the O Canada stepping on ELP's balls. That's what yeah. ELP used to do. Yeah. I was just like, oh, I'm like, like just because they were, they were the what is the the world's cutest world's tag cutest team. tag team, and just for the, your ex partner to step on your balls like that and steal your your step on somebody's balls move from you was great. Well, I mean, arguably also purple purple nurples were were his thing, and we've seen that stolen a lot yeah. recently. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, mm. So Chase, at the end of the match, though, comes Chase hits Hanma as he's coming off the second rope with the tag title. He's going for the co- the second rope Kokeshi. Gets hit with the tag title. Then he uh, Chase hits him with the package pile driver for the win. Chase and Kenta then steal the IWGP tag titles after the match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have some funny highlights. I have some funny highlights to add. So at the beginning there, when um, G.O.D. came out, uh, just kind of, I know that Hamra's not your regular dude, but like, maybe don't consider leaving him alone in the ring with these three members of Bullet Club. I don't know. I'm just happy they didn't attack him before these two got to the ring. But um, ELP and Hikaleo went out into the crowds. They were... They, they've been like giving like children and like small people the the titles to hold when they're you know, you know what I mean they're giving them small the titles. That, well, like I'm a small so person. PC, I am I'm three so PC of you small people. Well, like they're small women. Come on, women and children. Fine, the women and children. They, they put the titles on them to take pictures with them and give them the hearts and everything. And it's cute. But he, um, Hikaleo ended up in a weird area. And he couldn't get back down very easily. I don't know if you noticed. When he came down, he came by these two women. And he stepped on the chair that was, like, in between a group of people. And he brought his leg over top of the two women. The two women were just like, huh? <laughs> This is a seven foot man just suddenly like bringing his foot over your head. They didn't, the second woman didn't even know that he was coming over top of her head until her, his foot was in her face. And she kind of freaked out a little bit. It was really funny to watch them. Well, kind woman, of fan woman number one might not have been looking at his leg. She might have been looking at something else. I mean, he was in full stretch over top of her. She would be staring right up his booty hole. Um, <laughs> I loved in this match that ELP particularly was so determined to include Hamna in absolutely everything. He was so desperate to make him feel the high five, the high five, moving the hand down for him. Because let's be honest, we know Hamas can't jump. (laughs) Oh, aww. Oh, no. Hanma's don't jump, they fall. They do. They kokeshi. Um, Owens att- attempting the kokeshi on Hamna. Rude. Uh, got what you deserve for that one, though, because you missed. Um, 
Ishimori uh, hurting his hand um, trying to to do the Kokeshi. Hamna ends up like dropping it on him instead. Kenta just kicking him because that was what you would do in that situation. Um, the triple Kokeshi, though, of G.O.D. and Hamna on to Owens was fantastic. Um, but yeah, that package pile driver that Owens does is just so good. So crisp, so solid. I absolutely love it. I would hazard to say it's one of the best and safest looking pile drivers I think I've ever seen in professional wrestling, period, right now. And there's a hot dozen of those things. What and about, we're going to probably see a couple tonight out of the same person. Um, Are you talking the package pile driver? Yeah. Yeah. Well, just pile drivers in general, yeah. Well, Penta huh? has the package. Penta? Oh, yeah, Penta does, but also doesn't Harland have it? Yeah, he has the the J driller. Yeah, yeah. Lots of lots of pile drivers tonight we're going to see. But, yeah, the, the tension between G.O.D. and um, Owens and, and Kenta, obviously, full display in this one. I felt that um, Hamna and Ishimori were just kind of there for comedic relief. Yeah, really fun match. It just it just it, was, it yeah. worked overall. So mm-hmm. move on to the next one. I took absolutely no notes for this because I just enjoyed it and watched it. I just have the <laughs> ending. Um, Zach Sabre Jr. It's it's chaos. Ishii, Yo, Rush Tanahashi, and Ayusuke Taguchi, the, the man with the iron buns, mm-hmm. <laughs> versus TMDK's Kosei Fujita, Mikey Nichols, Shane Hayes, and Zach Sabre Jr. Uh, Saber misses an Enziguri. Gooch gets the ankle lock and he turns it into a Muda lock. But Saber reverses a Muda lock while still having his legs tied up Muda lock style. He twists his body and puts a oh, rear God. naked choke on Taguchi and Taguchi taps out while Saber's being submitted by Gooch. Saber's submitting Gooch and he gets Gooch to tap. Mm-hmm. Absolute perfection of a finish mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was so, so good let's, let's talk about the match and then we'll talk about the promo <laughs> yeah yeah go oh, ahead God. um well the entrance was hilarious for TMDK because we had Shane haste coming out and twerking he's and been like, doing that a lot lately too yeah, yeah, it's become was, a thing for him, and I it's I find it funny. He but was like, twerking just, on he was twerking on Saber on one of the shows I watched. He was it was this twer- one. It was no, this he, one. No, it was Saber was under the, as like a manager for them in one match, and he I remember him twerking on Saber because Saber was in like his pants and everything, and he was like twerking on Saber. I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But like this was right at the beginning when they came out, and he was Saber was the last one out, and Shane just starts twerking. It was really fun. <laughs> Um, yeah. Fujita and Yo in this match, holy heck and crap! Fujita chopping oh, the dude. holy heck and crap out of Yo, that was just monstrous. Um, Fujita has just become one of the best wrestlers I think I've seen come out of these young lions. And we've seen Shota, we've seen Ren, we've seen Yu Yu Mura, we've seen Suchi all come back, and they are all tremendously good in their own respect. But <laughs> holy crap. And think about what? Fujita. He did it without an excursion, too. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. He didn't have to do these year away things that the guys had, to, that the other four had to do, and that Nakashima and Lloyd Bay are on right now. He went with this faction, and the way they played it is that the faction knew how good he was, and they wanted him, and I love that story, because look how freaking good he is. Holy shit. This guy needs to be elevated higher. I would almost say that he's better than Ren Rita. I'd say he's more entertaining than Shota Umino. The only person that I would say he maybe might struggle with is Suji. Because Suji also has that unique mm. moveset. But yeah, uh, what else do I have on this one? The fluidity between Nichols and Haste is just effortless. These guys are so good. They're, they're, they have that LIJ mentality. They don't need to communicate to pull off their stuff. And they pull it off so well. 
Um, Zack Sabre Jr. and Taguchi was hilariously amazing. We saw G1 Taguchi, I think, in this match. Or like Super Junior Taguchi. We, we saw tournament Taguchi is what we saw. We saw a very serious side of Taguchi, as well as the goofiness that we always expect from him. But it was definitely at a minimal in comparison to how he usually is. Um, Yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say. I feel like this was like a, a TMDK appreciation match. Like it was it really like was. them saying, yeah, it was them being able to show off. And I, I think they deserve more than just a show off match for all the hard work that they have been doing over the last year, particularly with El Presidente. Um, but yeah, that's all I got to say on this one. Well, you talk about the fluidity of Hayes and Nichols. Mm-hmm. And those two started tagging together in 2010. Jesus. They had a couple year break when Nichols left WWE and Hayes mm-hmm. stayed there and did his own thing. But mm-hmm. they got back together in what, 2021? 2022 2021 2022 in that in that era whenever they brought the strong tag titles back they formed mm-hmm. right together right back before then and they spent a couple of years apart but other than that like you remember there's all that history of these two so mm-hmm. they for, to, for that fluidity makes so much sense man because mm-hmm. of how long these two have known each other that's a, again they don't just say a word and they know what the other's gonna do mm-hmm. It was almost it. like they are the NJPW version of the Motor City Machine Guns. Yeah, exactly, exactly, mm-hmm. but better, but better, because <laughs> they're better. Just simply, they're TMDK. They're better. Um, Might be a matter of opinion and discussion in the comments. <laughs> again, pers- personal opinion. They're better, <laughs> um, but Motor City Machine Guns are great. Don't come around. One of the best tag teams mm-hmm. I've ever watched in my life. Um, Post show, there was a promo from uh, TMDK, and mm-hmm. Saber comes in talking about uh, telling talking about how Brian Danielson's facing off against Shichiro, but he's training against the guy, the man with the iron bums, Rishiki Taguchi, and he's saying he beat him, and and, and and he's training with the hardest of the hard, and then he, he call, and then one of them calls Saber or Danielson's ass a baboon ass. That was haste. And then he also goes on to say, and he's got a loose butthole. <laughs> it would also be haste. <laughs> no, I know. He goes, like, <laughs> I, I remember Hayes saying was the loose butthole. I'm like, what the flipping hell is oh. going on with this promo? But it was so good. I mean, this is what we expect, though, out of these kind of promos from these guys in New Japan. I mean, we, we got the infamous sex pig promo from Will Ospreay. In NJPW here, so yeah. I guess I, this is going to be our guy to give us these fucking great like things out of promos now. <laughs> please, I I would absolutely love that because I typically don't like to watch the backstage promos and oh. stuff. But if this is what I have to look forward to, I will watch them. I will tune into every TMDK backstage promo from here on out because this is just gold. Shane it Hayes, is. Is, Shane Hayes, <laughs> and Zack Saber Jr. are both. Gold, hundred percent, hundred percent. So we're gonna jump over uh, to Lij versus just five guys. Um, building up to the fifth, they're gonna have their big gauntlet. Oh, what? What? I'm just I'm looking at the picture, and I thought Sonata was Yuya, and then I realized not that Yuya's on the other side. I'm like, is that Yuya though? He looks like Yuya holding back a massive fart. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> picture is very odd. Very odd yeah. picture indeed. Yeah. So, um, again, a lot of the same we've been seeing for the last 10, 11 months from these two teams taking mm-hmm. each other on it's with the addition of Tsuji and Uemura now. Um, I just, I'm good. Uh, I'm going to talk to finish, but I got really nothing else to talk about until we talk about the mm-hmm. gauntlet, t- gauntlet match from tomorrow or from the okay. fifth show. Uh, Suji hits the world backbreaker, gets a suplex, but Uemura slips out and he hits a and he hits a headbutt, but Suji hits a super kick. Uemura hits the Frankensteiner into the armbar, and Suji taps out. Mm-hmm. Imme- I- immediately, immediately too. Like as soon as he mm-hmm. had that armbar, and he went, he tapped out immediately because he's like, I'm not letting you wreck my arm. Yeah, again. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I noticed that also. I thought that was a little, little sus, but also very, very smart. Um, something I wanted to 
just say real quick, I love Taka Michinoku's entrance gear. That that tear apart robe is just so fire. I wish more people put that much effort into their entrances and entrance gear. Mm -hmm. Um, Doki and Hiromu, every time these two guys get in the ring, it's just freaking fire. The beginning of this match was so good. And then when Hiromu tagged in Bushi, again, it just kept up so good. Uh, the rewind kick by Bushi is always a place. That thing is just perfection. I've never seen anybody, including Rocky Romero, who also does the same kick. I've never seen someone do it so consistently crisp and on point every single time as Bushi. It's just such a good junior wrestler. The only person I think that's in the same ballpark as Bushi is probably Ray Phoenix, who does the rewind kick. Um, yeah. He's the only one that I think is at Bushi's level of doing it. I agree. Because both these guys, are that, it's that lucha ability from both these guys mm -hmm. that makes it so perfect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, last thing I wanted to say is Tai Chi and Shingo. When these two get into the ring every single time, you know it is going to be a hoss boss fight big meaty man slapping meat that's what it was we usually get the uh, ddt combo from shingo in this one with the straight right forearm um ddt uh combo this time we got the real con lariat which i was very happy it'd been a hot minute since we had that one everyone knows to duck for his his lariat which is a lesser of two evils no pun intended um yeah. I'm going to go with the Lariat, considering everybody ducks it. Uh, but yeah, really, the, the the feud in this one that was the most on display for me, despite having Naito and Sonata in this match with the ramping up to their World Heavyweight defense, Yeah, uh, Suji and Yuya, um, these two, they're not happy with each other. I'm trying to understand why, because before they had such a camaraderie when they were... When the four of them were here and Narita and Shota left first, it was just Suji and Yuya kind of holding down the fort with the, the new young lions of Oiwa uh, Fujita and Nakashimi at that time. Um, so they were kind of holding down the fort a little bit. They kind of were a little bit more bonded. It kind of makes me sad to see them just beating on each other. But at the same time, who better to feud with than the person you know the best? You're going to bring out the absolute best in each other. And I think it's what Yuya needs right now. Because Suji came in and established himself right away. He challenged Sonata and he had a banger of a match with him. He's been consistently performing. Whereas Yuya has come in and it's kind of, I don't want to say it's been underwhelming. But in comparison to Suji, it, it certainly has. So I think that Yuya in particular needs this feud with Suji to really solidify himself, not only in NJPW, but in just five guys. Yeah. Um, I would get, I would say you and Murray's time here has been whelming at best. Mm -hmm. not, not overwhelming, not underwhelming, but whelming at best. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's yeah. fair. So we're gonna get into the top four, the big the big match of this show. Uh, mm -hmm. Con uh, Great Ocon versus Alice Coggin. Uh, Great Ocon replacing uh, Jeff Cobb due to his, to his thigh strain or quad strain. I can't remember what it was. Um, mm -hmm. Con with the Mongolian sits on Coggin in the corner, but Coggin fights out of it and then mm -hmm. does like whips uh, Con off the top turnbuckle, and he mm -hmm. works the, and then he works over the leg and then transitions into like uh, a, like a headbutt style bow and arrow and then mm -hmm. he turns it into the traditional bow and arrow um and then flips it into an arm try uh, uh, then gets into an arm triangle choke or mm -hmm. no it's not arm triangle um anaconda vice but then Khan oh, yeah, gets yeah. to the ropes like just great transition work from Coglin mm -hmm. and Khan who's the recipient he's got a lot of transition work to do there too so like both guys mm -hmm. absolutely great here man um mm -hmm. Arm triangle choke. This is where the actual arm triangle choke comes in by Khan. And then he hits an exploder, then back to the arm triangle choke. But Coglin gets the ropes. Coglin slips out of the torture rack into a release German, gets the spear in the corner. The follow away slam for two. Uh, Khan with a gut wrench. Then, Al then Alice Coglin gets gets one. Then Khan hits the belly to belly. Then, then, uh, then 
Coggin gets uh, gets a belly to belly, almost dropping Khan on his head. Um, mm. And Khan hits a backdrop. Then Coggin hits a backdrop, and they're both down. Uh, Coggin then gets an FU for two. Uh, Khan bites the wrist, um, hits the Mongolians, and then hits the TTD. But Coggin kicks out a two. Uh, Coggin stops an eliminator, gets a forearm, but Khan gets the sleeper suplex, hits the eliminator, gets and gets him pinned with a jackknife pin for the win in like a little over ten minutes, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I mercifully don't have a ton of notes on this, so <laughs> this one will be quick. Um, as you mentioned at the beginning, Coglin super technical. Not something we're used to seeing with him. He does have that technical ability, but it's not something that he typically pulls out because this guy is usually just the raw power kind of wrestler. And we usually see Gabe Kidd doing that kind of technical thing. Um, I don't know, maybe because Kidd wasn't in this match with him. He he felt more comfortable bringing out that side. But also, Great Khan has mentioned, he is a tremendous technical wrestling talent and you have to fight fire with fire when you're fighting the great Ocon. Um all hail. Um oh this match was a anything you can do I can do better match. Uh, it felt like you know one would do something and the other be like I can do that too. Oh well I can do this. Well I can do that too. It was a tremendous back and forth of these men just fighting for dominance over each other. And in the end, it looks like the great O'Conn was a little bit more dominant than Coglin, which is surprising because he definitely again is the driving power force, I think, in this rendition of Bullet Club. Yeah. Again, really good match, man. Yeah. Like I really enjoyed this. But the next match, holy Ooh. shit. I don't even oh. consider this a match. It was a fight. Um, this was a bare knuckle brawl. As soon as they both got in there, they're smashing each other, headbutts, brawling. They go to the floor. They're Germany each other. They're beating the piss. They're running each other into the barricades throughout the match. They're running each other into the post. Uh, kid Lyria Tanari over the barricade into the fans. And then I think Tanari did to Kid at one point. They're beating mm-hmm. the piss out of each other um kid does a dive off the elevated area but gets punched in the face as it come down um yeah yeah dude it's 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 crazy man um mm-hmm. hanari goes uh for a springboard move in the ring kid pushes him over the top and they go back to the floor and they're just it's just two guys uh, and then uh kid gets some mic at one point and goes you're welcome and no okay and and throws it down and just starts Beating the piss out of Hanari again. They're just the kicks, the kicks from Hanari in this to the chest were just brutal. And Kid just he's biting the forehead and they're just beating the piss out of each other. Um it's hard to call this as like a proper because it's just the same stuff over and over, but in the best different ways that they did it. Um Kid hits a suplex. Dropping Hanari on his head just looked mm-hmm. just gross. Um, Hanari hits the rampage and he hits the knee in the corner in the rampage, but it gets the kick. He says a 2.9. Um, they brawl the floor, or they actually kid gets a brain buster in the ring, but then Hanari comes right back and hits a brain buster of his own. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Hanari ends up like both down, and but Hanari get, grabs the hand of the rep to stop the standing 10 count. Um, and then they start headbutting each other. Uh, they trade hard s- slap strikes, head- keep headbutting each other. Um, and Hari is this hard cracking headbutt to him, and they both go crashing the mat. The ref again does a standing 10 count and he gets to 10. It's and it's ruled a double knockout. But mm-hmm. holy shit, mm-hmm. you want to mm-hmm. see two dudes fight? This is it. This was the closest thing to, uh, I think, a UFC or MMA fight in, like, a straight fight from the UFC or MMA in a wrestling ring. These guys didn't really have the, I don't think, intentions of doing standard wrestling moves. Um, Yeah, the tension between these two teams is just absolutely unreal. And, like, Canari has been center, front and center in it for 
the whole time. Um, yeah, th this was pretty much just a brawl. This was just a bare knuckle brawl. There wasn't like I that's all I have written down is this is a brawl, this is a fight. Punched yeah. out of midair. That was all I got. <laughs> Dude, but again, absolutely incredible brawl. And like it yeah. it's very different from the technical style that we got in the first UE mm -hmm. dogs match. This is the brawl. The next one is more your uh your brawler versus your flyer, which we'll get to mm -hmm. in, in Finley versus Newman. Again, which we're gonna talk about, like David Finley. Uh, with Gato versus Callum Newman. Uh, the title is not on the line in this match. Um, and Newman comes flying up before the bell and just starts attacking. He's so quick. He's just, just hitting with all the moves he can early on. He misses the, the plancha to the floor. Finn runs him into the barricade in the apron, and then he knocks him over the barricade into the crowd. He gets him back in the ring. He's dominating him in the ring. Uh, whipping him into the corner hard, choking him over and over again. Newman gets the ropes on the Boston Crab attempt. Um, beautiful Uranagi backbreaker by Finley. Because the way he just gets the guy up and he just comes down so hard into the knee, it looks so good. Um, Newman fights back when they end up on the floor, drop kicks Finley through the the barricade gate. Look, that looked like a great spot when he goes cra when he went crashing through the gate and actually. It went bang open and then came back and smacked Finley in the leg. It was like, oh. <laughs> um, Newman catches a lariat in the ring, turns it like, like he does the, like he did the Osprey and did a Spanish fly out of it. Like this is literally Will Osprey Jr. right here. Um, because like, at, like he's running for the lariat and he just flips it into a Spanish fly, Osprey style. Um, he gets a tiger suplex with the bridge for two. Uh, Finley ends up sidestepping an os cutter attempt, and uh, he ends up just lariating the shit out of Newman and gets a two count. Like, yeah, I thought he took his head off. Um, Finley says, Tell me I'm the man, and new and he's getting in his face. Newman spits in his face, just yeah, he's like, I will not bow down to you. Uh, so Finley just starts beating the piss out of the kid, like, hit, starts hitting shots to the Repeated shots to the back of the head, uh, hits a power bomb, goes for the cover. That two, he pulls Newman up, and I'm like, "Are they going to give Newman a win here?" Because usually, when a guy pulls a guy up, they do that whole like he gets rolled up in the end for it. But uh, no, he picks him up under kill. That's the new. That's the name of this one where he doesn't drop down. It's when he's got the guy in the super submission and then brings his knee up into his head. It, it's called at least that's how I heard Chris Charlton call it the under kill. And he gets, and Finley gets the win. But mm. great match, great showcase for Kyle Newman here. He got some great offense in against arguably your number two champion in the company. And Finley still looked like a monster beating the shit out of this kid. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I don't have anything to add. I, I, you kind of said it all for Sorry. me there. This was a show. No, no, this is good for the sake of time. This is good. <laughs> Um, yeah, this this was definitely an, an Callum Newman showcase match, but like I definitely went into this knowing that he wasn't going to get that surprise win. Um, Finley being the global champion, I feel like they're going to try to kind of. It's kind of weird, but like I feel like the global title is now the more recognized title in NJPW right now over the world heavyweight title because the the Sonata and Naito match at this point hasn't been show like put in the same front line and front running as David Finley has I feel mm -hmm. um which I have a problem with because you can tell when when Naito does come out and Sonata does come out the crowd is very excited to see them especially in Japan so I feel like Finley is extremely credible over there, so he's just kind of adding to the credibility of NJPW overall, which I feel like they need right now. Yeah, again, absolutely incredible match. And if it, I, I really liked the main event, but maybe because I was so impressed with Callum Newman here, this was my match of the night. The main event was oh. tremendous, but just I was so impressed with Newman. I, I loved how intense Finley was here. Mm. I, 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 I got to give this my match of the night, of, of the fourth. I got to give him a match of the night because, again, it's just 
it was only a little over 10 minutes, but it was just so good. And they had that mm -hmm. 20-minute brawl before this, which was amazing. And then the main event, which we'll get to, was tremendous. Mm -hmm. This was just, I don't know. I just, I, I love this the most out of everything. Interesting, interesting. So we move on to the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, Tag Team Championships. Catch 2-2, Francesco Akira and TJP taking on the Bullet Club War Dogs, Clark Connors and Drilla Maloney. They're brawling at the start. Catch sends dogs to the floor with hit stereo planchas. Uh, Connors used the chair on TJP on the floor, then places him in the chair and spears him out of the chair. It's a great little spot. Akira runs Connors into the barricade, and then uh, Catch end up hitting an alley-oop onto the chair. <laughs> it, was, it was really good. Um, Connors spears Akira into a like a table, like leaned at ringside, and it doesn't break. So Connors picks him up and whips him into it, and it finally breaks. Oh, uh, so good. Uh, What's that? Drilla putting his foot through it was what made it finally break. Break. Oh, was it? I thought it was yeah. Akira on the on the on the whip. Into no, the he he yeah. hit it again and he just bounced. And then Drilla came up and was like beacon about something. I couldn't understand him when he gets to that point. And then he just boof put his foot through. I was like, bruh. Okay. I, again, I, I might have missed that. I apologize. Uh, they're just beating the crap out of TJP, whipping him hard into the corner. That he goes tumbling over the top of the corner. Um, just to beat in the press. Connor's pouncing, uh, uh, I think it was Akira across the mm -hmm. ring, dude. Mm -hmm. oh, I fucking love that move. Um, mm -hmm. Tree of Road drop kick by Akira, and then a Tree of Wolf stomp. Like, like, so, like, they had him in the tree. Well, Akira comes in with the drop kick, and then TGP comes off the top and stomps the hell out of Drill and Maloney in the tree of well. Great combo there, the drop kick into the stomp. I loved mm -hmm. it. Um, the Connors is spiking Akira off the back of TJP. It just, it just looked good. And then Drill hits that spine buster sent on to TJP. Um, mm. Do the War Dogs hit the high low to TJP for two. Hit Drill a killer to Akira. Connors misses the full clip. And it was really weird because he looked like he slipped off the top almost. I don't know. It, it looked really odd. So TJP gets a roll up on uh, Drilla for two. And then Connors accidentally spears Drilla. Um, had to do that uh, motor machine gun style like stomp and neck breaker combo. Uh, and then they hit the. Uh, they missed the knees, but then they hit their own high low. To, they hit a high low to Drilla for two. Um, mm -hmm. Akira gets a low bridge, sending, I think it was, sending uh, the guys, the dogs out. They hit super K, they, or and then uh, he gets a low bridge, or he gets low bridge. Sorry, I, I read, wrote that wrong. And then the, the word dogs hit super kicks to TJP. Then they hit catches sandwich knees to TJP, but he gets kicked out of, they kicks out of two. Uh, full clips avoided. Akira run off the top to Connors. TJB tornado DT to Drilla. They hit the alley oop to Connors. Akira hits the running knee to Drilla and the ropes. Uh, TJP hits the running knee for two. Uh, Drilla has a fork, and this is scares Akira off the top for the leaning tower because he got forked a while back by Drilla. Nobody likes getting forked, and we have some bad history of forkings here in Alberta. I'll say that right now uh, from a, a certain Vince Austin burning a venue because of that forking. Goddamn bastard. Um, Don't get me started on that one. And Connors ends up hitting no chase through to TJP. Akira gets speared out of the air. And then they hit him with the high low, hit him with full clip. And the War Dogs regain the, the junior tag titles a month and change after losing them. Or literally, a month mm -hmm. to the day after losing them. Oh, January 4th or true. February 4th. Yeah. I just realized that. Um, mm -hmm. And then after the match, the War Dogs all come out and just lay waste to all the members of the Empire that are there. Like, they're all beating them. It, like, they're just beating everybody down. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the... Wasn't this the beatdown when Cobb came out? And well, Cobb the, the Cobb was at the, start, at the start of the show. But then Cobb came out Cobb. at the end. Yeah, he gets beat down. Uh, Callum came out. He got beat down. O'Con came off of commentary and he got beat down. Like everybody got beat down here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
it was a very dominant night for um, Bullet Club, to say the, the very dogs. least. For the dogs. For the dogs, yo. And those are your dogs for real. Um, uh, let's see, we got the table spot. There was a chop that TJP did to Maloney that was very clappy. And I loved it because it was like that Osprey level clap loudness. And I loved it. Um, when did TJP start bleeding? I, he just kind of, he left one point. Like there was a part where he was not the focus of the match. And he came back in and suddenly his head was bleeding. I think he got just got caught. I think that was actually like a hard way shot. I don't think he was like a, a him bleeding. I think he just got hit by something, an errant shot, or hit his head run into something, and it just cut him. Hmm. I don't think it was Here. like I really don't think it was where it's coming from, like the side more, right? It looked like an eyebrow split, like yeah, what so happened to Soy Boy at uh, the RCW thing when he split his eyebrow. And that's that's an errant shot split. So it's probably just off of a, off of a sharp elbow, a knee. It could have been mm -hmm. going off the post and hitting it the wrong way. It happens. Like you know what I mean? Like it. Yeah, yeah it's just usually we see it. And like for me, I didn't see it. So when he came back in and he was suddenly just his face was bleeding, I was like, "The frick happened?" Mm -hmm. Kind of surprised me. Um, the, there was a snap body slam by Connors on Okira and Okira. Akira, mm -hmm. um, that looked really scary just because he didn't quite rotate him all the way, and it almost looked like Akira came down on top of his head. Um, the ending got a little confusing for me. There just seemed to be a lot mm -hmm. going on, and then suddenly it was just like one, two, three, boom. And I was like, what the frick? To see also, and I think what confused me a little bit, like I understand... Again, I don't want to say it too much. The forking. I understand, you know, PTSD. It's a thing. Yeah, I can understand that he would be weird about it. It's just the way he portrayed the weirdness in this kind of came off a little awkward to me. Maybe is what, what was confusing to me. Um, but it made sense in the story, which overall works for me. Um, I was... Sad to see United Empire lose the tag titles again right away. But I completely had forgotten, maybe just not been paying enough attention, that they hadn't been using the, the war dog straps, that they had been, they went back to the classic black straps, and now the war dogs get their fancy new ones back. Even though it meant Empire losing the titles. At the point that you made yesterday on Andre Melville Wrestling Talk on OLE was maybe this means that Maloney and Connors have resigned with NJPW. And if that's if if catch two two losing the tag titles was what needed to happen for that to happen, I can deal with it for now because once the contract ink is done. They can lose them again. So that's good. <laughs> like, and again, like this division could be so much fun. Because remember, you if, from TMDK, you have Robbie Eagles and Kosei Fuji that are still waiting in the wings. You have, you still have the potential of Kushida and Knight coming back. There's lots of great junior tag teams um, to come back here. I'm, I'm super excited. The CMLL guys that they could bring in, like ABC. Um, ABC come, could come back. There's lots, man, and mm -hmm. I, I look forward to seeing what is next for the War Dogs, honestly. Like, could mm -hmm. it be a, a feud with Fujita and, and Eagles? It's very possible, and I would I would love that. War Dogs versus TMDK, I'm in. Like, that sounds like a great feud. I feel like they could also use the personality of the War Dogs to give credibility to some teams that are maybe squandering a little bit. Um, combinations like maybe um, not House of Torture because they're kind of busy right now, but like Doki and Taka, yeah, could see some development in there because Doki's already a really good wrestler. And same with Taka, Taka has that personality, just Taka's usually the fall guy, but we have seen him pick up 
couple wins over the last couple months. So maybe we could start to see a little bit more development from from Doki on that, because I would love to see Doki holding a singles title at some point. Um, you know, maybe even Yo could find himself yet another partner somewhere in the Chaos Hantai mess. Mushimura and, and, or whatever the fuck that the duty was tagging with in the tag league. Sure. Or, was it Mushi, why not? M- Musashi or something? I, I want to say Mushimura, but Musashi or something? I don't remember. I think Musashi is, is Musashi. sounds closer. Mas- masa- um, Masashi, you know? <laughs> I wouldn't also mind seeing maybe some other companies working together. Like we've seen Noah working together. We have seen DDT also kind of working with these guys. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing Mao again. Mao. Get get him a partner. Have him go with the war dogs. Heck, who is the guy with the, the stuffy? They could be yo. Yeah. They could be yo Mao. We could bring in. They could bring in Mao and oh we could yo God. Mao or Mao yo. Yo Mao. That just sounds like you're saying your mouth, and that just kind of sounds a little weird. Your mouth. <laughs> Did you imagine your mouth? Your mouth. Yeah. No, that doesn't work for me. Your Mao yo mouth. doesn't sound any better. <laughs> We should move on to the next one, though, because you girls got to get ready for another show tonight. Yeah, so we kick it off for the fifth. Uh, Katsuyu, you, Katsuya. Uh, Katsuya. Why can't they say his name? Katsuya I Murashima. I can say Murashima, but I can't say Katsuya. What the hell? <laughs> part is part of his name. <laughs> Versus Shomakato. Uh, this ended in a time limit draw. I didn't, I, uh, I'll i be honest, I didn't even see this match. Um, give us a quick 30 seconds on this, Mel. <laughs> I don't have a ton of notes on this one, but the, all, overall, for a Young Lion match, this was a very solid match. These guys are both very hyper-expressive, especially Katsuya. Katsuya has very, very good and very big facial expressions, and Ashoma really reciprocated. They told the story of... Um, they're both in training, and they're trying to one-up each other. They're trying to get that superiority. And holy heck, was Katsuya giving it to Shoma. Um, I feel like Katsuya is the smaller one of the two. So I feel like he needs to um, work a little bit harder with Shoma. But Shoma was so good, too. I really, really enjoyed this match. I really am looking forward to see where these two guys go. Because, man, the the Japan, Japan Dojo has really been putting out really solid young lion wrestlers. These guys were tremendous. There was a half crab that um, Katsuya actually put on Shoma as opposed to the full crab. And he was able to really reef on him so much he almost had him doing the heel touch on his head it was so crazy but it was very interesting to see it as a half instead of the full crab which is typically taught to these guys um it's uh, kind of almost feeling like they're giving young lions just a little bit more um move sets and a little bit more freedom with the moves that they can do in the young lion training time as opposed to just saying you do the basic strikes you do the belly to belly. You do the Boston Crab. You do this. You do. They're they're allowed to expand a little bit more earlier on the move set, so we don't have the same cookie cutter guys. And they've actually grown their hair out quite a bit from when these pictures were taken. These guys actually have, I would say, hair maybe a little bit more comparable to Robbie Eagles. Robbie Eagles' length of hair. Um, they're yeah, both looking great. Yeah, this oh, picture I... makes me think they both look like goddamn children. One just looks like an yeah, angry no. little child. <laughs> oh, no, no. Now that they both have hair, they actually are both, and both of them have actually put on a fair amount of muscle also. They're both looking very intimidating in their own rights. Katsuya, though, I think is going to struggle. You can tell a lot from his face. He just has very... Pr- I don't want to say happy eyes because that is, I don't, maybe that's the right word. I don't know. He has a softer face. It's very hard for him to pull off big, scary dude. 
So I think he's going to be a tremendous face. Whereas Shoma, Shoma really, he can furrow his brow. He can look really pissy. <laughs> well, he looks but yeah, like this in the picture. a great pre-show. He does. He really does. So we move on. Uh, rematch from the night before. Bullet Club, Owens, Kenta, and Taiji Shimori take an El Fantasmo, Nicoleo, but this time with Jado. Jado had the cross face on Kenta at the end, but Ishimori interferes. Jado fights him off. Owens hits him with the IWGP tag title. Kenta rolls him up. Bullet Club attacks after the match. Hikaleo and EP run him off. Uh, uh, G.O.D. hit the sudden death into the gods. And Chokeslam too. I think it was Ishimori after the match. Chokeslam by Hikaleo. Like at the post match, like they oh, hit the sudden death the into the godsend choke slam. The godsend choke slam. To, I think it was. I think, yes, it was. It was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Again, fun little match. Uh, very similar mm-hmm. to the night before. They, just, they were doing their little bit less comedy in this one uh, with Jado in there because they weren't playing it up with it with Hanma as much as well. How I watched it. No. They yeah. were playing a little bit with ELP though, as I mentioned. Oh, yeah. The the purple nurples were a thing, um, especially in this match, um, with ELP. Um the purple nurple was actually done by Ishimori. And I was very sad and thought this was very mean. Because again, these are former tag team partners and tag team holders. Um, because weren't they junior champions together for a hot minute? Yeah, yeah. I feel like they were. Yeah, yeah. It's disappointing. We're, we're to, tag to team. See, yeah, it was. It's disappointing to see the tag teams kind of dissolve. But I do like the the route that it has taken ELP on because mm-hmm. I do feel that he's helping Hikaleo a tremendous amount. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So purple marble that pop bomb neck breaker combo by Owens and Kenta respectively was so good. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe heard Chris say that they had attempted it. Um, in that tag team match before against G.O.D. Oh, for the strong titles, yeah. Yeah, but they hadn't, like, there was some kind of confusion or miscommunication where they couldn't pull it off in the same way, and this was kind of their first kind of, like, big display of it. It looked really good, I thought, anyway. Um, The chokeslam to Ishimori was massive, um, just because Ishimori, he, he went all the way up. And all the way down. It was like nothing can stop him. He's all the way up. He, if he would have let go of him at the top of that choke, he probably would have launched him into the rafters. It was such a good choke slam and well done choke slam. Makes me wonder how people mess them up. Um, yeah, happy that God got their titles back. Stole them back from uh, Kenta and Owens. Um, is this the final match or is there a few more matches going before? Yeah, there's a few more matches before there is, shot. but they're not being they're not being shown. Um, mm-hmm. is again the the next show that's being shown on New Japan is the 11th, and that's where the mm-hmm. tag titles are on the line. There's matches in mm-hmm. between; they're just not being aired on New Japan World. Okay, so for us yeah. as international fans, this is our last kind of seeing them before they go into their title shot. This is a good way to kind of leave it off. Oh, know? very much kinda, so. Yeah. Yeah. So we move on to it. We're gonna move on to a match that I really just don't give a shit about. After watching the after watching the first one, um, the fourth, I watched this one, and I was just like, "Okay, it's the same fucking match, just different ending." Um, Elvis brought up Olga Bolton, Shota Umino, Tomaki Hanma, Andy Yo, taking on House of Tortures, Evil, Ren and Rita, Show, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and Yujiro Takahashi. Again, like I, I love seeing Bolton just tossing people around like he does. The, the power is impressive, but this did match, you count how many he did? I think it was like 11. Was 11, it 11? I thought rotations. it was like 8. I thought it was like 7 no, or 8. No, it was but... 11. 11, and then he handed him off to Yo, who promptly dropped him. Yeah. <laughs> but again, I, it, it's good. I just... I don't... I'm tired of watching House of Torture. I just I just am. And the mishmash team, Despi Umino... Um, is there, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. So, the end of that, this match, Narita comes in with the push up bar, but Umino takes it away, sends him out. And then, but it, before he's going to use it, he throws it away, hits the uppercut to Ujiro, rolling elbow, and hits the Death Rider for the win. Again, mm-hmm. match was fine, just, just more of the same. Just, 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 yeah, yeah. 
I mean, House of Torture been House of Torturing us since they started. Um, I've been saying it for a few months now. House of Torture needs a new leader. The, just the leadership for this faction is not working, which is so disappointing because Evil is such a good wrestler on his own without the shenanigans and shit. He's actually a very accomplished wrestler. It's just... I, I really do feel like House of Torture devalues him as an individual, and he as an individual devalues the entire faction with his lack of leadership. I feel that Red Narita would be a better leader, would have a better ability to formulate the team and figure out things a little bit better. So I'm waiting for Red Narita to overthrow evil and kick him out of House of Torture so that we can actually start enjoying this heel faction. Thank you for coming to my Melball talk. Um, so getting into this match. Again, Bolton Oleg with the 11 back and forth yeets. One thing I wanted to mention is he did that on Yoshinobu Kanemaru. Kanemaru was so smart with this because the night before, who was it he was doing it to show? Sure. Show was just ragdolling it. And you could tell not only was it hurting Show a little bit, because I've been yeeted around like that a few times too. It doesn't feel good on your back. It doesn't feel good on your stomach. Um, so Yoshinobu Kanemaru was so smart. He tucked up. He made himself a little and he made it so effortless for Bolton to just wee, 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 wee. And, but the trade off to Yo was hilarious because Yo was like, yeah, I can do that too. No, B. No, you are Bolton's leg. No. It was really funny because he took Yoshinobu and then he just, wah, just dropped him. It was hilarious. Oh, no, he knew he could drop him. That's what he knew he could do. <laughs> well, Mr. Yo, next time you know that you can drop somebody like Kanemaru, who's a House of Torture person, try it from a higher height. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Um, one of the, the second thing I wanted to say was Desperado has one of the best spine busters in professional wrestling right now that I've seen, maybe only second to Triple H. It's just so solid, and he hits it out of nowhere and so perfectly every single time. I've never seen him mess this up. Um, the last thing I want to say is, is actually, you know, comment on Shota's kind of closeout there with the uh, European uppercut, forearm, and death rider combo on Yujiro. I have been pretty, I've been shitting on Shota a little bit lately. That This was a good match for him. Mm -hmm. But you're absolutely right. Overall, this this combination of Hantai Chaos has been nothing but chaos. And I don't mean that in the faction way. I mean it in the glorious, glorious chaos kind of way. This team kind of feels like it's lost. And it feels like each person is on a boat and they're all holding a rope, just loosely holding each other together. And like some of them are getting away. Some of them are all close. It just, I feel... Like in stardom with some of the people who are kind of milling about that new factions need to be formed and old ones need to be dissolved that aren't working. And I feel like Hantai and Chaos are not working in NJBW favor. They need to leave each other and re-establish yep. under a different banner. I feel the same way. Like I think Hontai can go. I think Hontai could stay. I think that's okay. But Chaos needs to go. Mm -hmm. that, you, it was you, Okada's faction anyway. Well, you they lost the original leader in Shinsuke Nakamura, but they had Okada to take over. Mm -hmm. And then Okada's gone. Or he will be gone very, very soon. Mm -hmm. just, just end the faction. You don't have somebody to mm -hmm. take over. Make it go away. Let, let, you can let Hontai exist. I'm, not, I'm okay with Hontai. Let's just keep but, it with like Nagata and Tenzan and like the aging guys, Tanahashi. Yeah. And you can have the like an Umino, so Umino and Despi have association with them just to give them so they have their backups style. every time. Well, they, well no, because Desperado is now part of Hontai. Mm 
which was which strong style i guess was a part of according to charlton he's but, still wearing the shirt though form it make it its own faction again and but then i also look at why do the bull the bullet club exist because we have the war dogs the war dogs can just be the war dogs they don't need the bullet club moniker how's the torture is loose, loosely associated with them and then you could just let chase kenta and ishimori go do something else like they could just be the, mm-hmm. the japanese section of the rogue army if you for all for all all intents and purposes like you mm-hmm. don't need the name bullet club anymore that's the thing that name could just go away at this point i mean i think it should stay on the war dogs at the very very least because i feel like that's kind of actually what helped them a lot establish themselves do they require it now maybe not but if we're going with like faction naming and stuff i have been telling you house of torture is not a part of bullet club since they formed they're not they don't help anybody but themselves that like and and the other bullet club doesn't help them either and then they get in the ring together and just like hey, too sweet. Da, 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 da. and i'm gonna kick you in the balls and let the big dick choke you and like yeah this isn't a faction <laughs> if you guys don't like each other don't share the freaking name it's house of torture it's not bullet club um but like kenta ishimori and um chase owens i mean they're the og bullet club they can't not be bullet club if they're still associated to me but that being said i do feel that the era of bullet club that they were all attached to doesn't exist anymore so i definitely feel like they should rebrand um, I do think they should keep the Bullet Club moniker, but I do agree Rogue that we should. Army. Yeah, I was gonna say like, why couldn't Chase and Gishimori and Kenta all align themselves with Fale and Bonza? Is that his name? Jack Bonza. Yeah, well, there's, Jack Bonza. A, there's a bunch more of them in in, in Tamashi. There's a there's a, it's a whole faction in Tamashi, the Rogue Army. So. See, like, and I'd, and I'd also like to see, like, ABC, like, they're part of Bullet Club, too, but, like, no one really associates with them. I don't understand why. They're actually a very reputable <laughs> part of Bullet Club because they're tag champs. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we have to move on, though, because we are getting late, late, late. Uh, we in the next match, Chaos, Tom Hirishi and, Tom, and Toriyana teaming up with, uh, from Hontai, Hiroshi Tanashi teaming up with from Great Patch Heel, I guess. Um, Chogi Makabe uh, taking on TMDKs, Kosei Fujita, Mikey Nichols, Shane Hayes, and Zach Seba Jr. Shirt yeah. I'll be wearing, the shirt I'll be wearing tonight. Fujita hits the Tope Con Hilo to everyone on the floor. Makabe hits a harsh Larry to Saber, but he comes back and with the rear naked choke and the Cobra Twist. But Makabe fights out. Saber catches the Lariat into an armbar, then a triangle, then into the disarmor, and Makabe taps out. Kosei Fujita, though, and they talked about it in the promo, the thick legs, throwing all those leg lariats and the kicks. God damn it, this kid is just perfection. He is so good. So freaking good. And, like, how about that middle finger to El Presidente in this match, pulling off not only a sling blade, but a dragon screw leg whip on the ace. And it was so picture perfectly good so good i i love that this match was definitely for me a, a kose fuji fuji to show off match like there was a lot of people in this but i felt like fujita was the star of this particular match and my goodness did he star all over everyone it was crazy um there was also a tope con hilo that Fujita did that was just I don't know how these guys are so athletic soy boy is the same Chris Starr is the same the Alex Rain the same they just you think that they're going to like the the momentum they're going they're going to end up way over there and they just go down and hit the mark exactly it's so impressive um well, yeah was it- what one of the shows we watched uh, last year, 
Fujita did the dive over, and he, he literally the guys had to grab him to keep him out of the crowd. Does he? But do yeah, it? that was ELP. ELP had to reach up and pull him down. Yeah, so he didn't land in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, because he would have launched himself over the barricades. <laughs> yep. It's crazy. He's so good, and yeah, hit the springs in his step are like Kevin Knight level. Mm -hmm. So crazy. Yeah. So we're gonna get into the next one and. Mm -hmm. The next match officially was a minute and 11 seconds. Let's just say that. War, War Dogs versus Empire. Newman, Kakira, Khan, and TJP versus Co uh, Coglin, Connors, Finley, and Maloney. Mm -hmm. TJP removes the turnbuckle as soon as he got into the ring because they got in first. They're brawling as soon as the War Dogs are out. Everybody's brawling. They're not even in the ring. Um, they're brawling over the floor. Connors gets head scissors in the ring or gets head scissors by Akira in the ring. And then Finley comes in. And just hits Akira with a chair, like or talk, throws a chair into Akira's he face. Needed it, yeah. I think and the ref calls for the bell. And this is where Connor spears Marty Asami. Uh, and Finley what hits a the frick. Yeah, Finley hits a power bomb to Akira, proceeds to beat him down. The War Dogs gang up on Khan. They're just beating down all the members of the Empire. They just destroy Newman. They destroy TJP. Um TGP finally gets the miss to Finley, but then he gets him hit hits him with the shillelagh shot. Uh, this mm -hmm. is where they put the dog collar in Akira, and Akira's like fighting and fighting not to get this dog collar put on him. They put it mm -hmm. on him, they because they did this to him before. Um, it was uh, yeah, in December TJP. there. It, TJP or, too, yeah. Yeah, and they hung him, they hung Akira with the with the collar in, in December. They did it to him again, hang him over the ropes. He's choking. Um Finley gets the mics as uh, Osprey, are you watching? You can't save your friends, and your friends can't save you. And then they end up going. They end up finally ending. It's just mm -hmm. like, yeah. Whoa. Um, it's that last I, statement before the steel cage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Empire pissed as hell. Mm -hmm. Um. They when they were coming out for their intros. You know, usually we get the the crowds and we get like the yeah, Empire here. You know, TJP's like, yeah, cool. Akira's like, Kira. You know, we got none of that. They just hit the ring and they started taking off turnbuckles. They started looking for chairs. They they were doing they didn't care that they were supposed to be in a match at that point. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I wrote no intros, just violence. Because it just kind of erupted, um, but yeah, right when, right when um, Akira and Connor started what felt like a match was when Finley yeeted that chair right into Akira's face, and I I remember I was actually it was pretty late when I was watching this match, I popped when that happened. I was like, holy shit, okay, that's a way to do a thing. Um, and then, yeah, this whole time that, you know, they're beating down everybody afterwards was like, what, probably like five, ten minutes. And it was just that stupid bell ringer. Just ding, 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 ding. I was getting aggravated with things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, bruh, they're clearly not listening to you. Just stop. There's no reason to keep going with the annoyance. Um, but, yeah. Um, and then the, the mist in the face was interesting. Because it was almost like Finley no sold it to to kind of pop off the shillelagh hit, mm -hmm. um, which I didn't like because that's one of TJP's things now. Um, so you're supposed to react to it a little bit, and I would say in the same way you would react to Muda spitting in your face. So we've seen Muda's daughter is now wrestling. And and spit and mist and reloading things. And why are you shaking your head? I really liked her match. I did, but I don't like that she's a carbon copy of her dad. <laughs> I wish she was her own person. <laughs> using the mist, she's using the shining wizard. It means we got yeah. we got three Muda copies on, on the go right now. Sonata, Kaito, and her. Like I disagree. Only because I don't look at Sonata and see I do Muda. 
maybe that's because you you are more privy to his history with Muta. But even for me knowing that, it's like I just look at you know Muta and I I say Muta has like boundless charisma. <laughs> Sonata don't. So like I I for there there's a disconnect. Um, and with Kaido, Kaido's got that charisma. He's got that thing. But to me, he looks more like Okada. So I, I kind of, and I, I look at that a little bit more. So I kind of, I feel like Kaido is maybe more of a Okada than Muda. Again, per, um, it's a personal feeling for me. That's yeah, just, sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, but anyway, let's focus on this one because I got us off track there. Um, yeah, just five minutes of bell ring was really aggravating. But I felt that the promo that Finley put in after this with Osprey and stuff, perfect. Like mm-hmm. if you were doubting that Finley was an established wrestler at njpw watch this glorious chaos you will think differently yeah so we're gonna move on main event faction warfare match we got the lij versus uh just five guys so two guys start there's 10 minute time limit on each match if you hit 10 minutes both men are eliminated uh, and if you get a pinfall or submission you eliminate the person the next person comes out we start with the champ and sonata uh, the training pin falls early. Sonata getting the drop kick to the outside, or sending him to the outside, hits a punch to the floor. Uh, they rip each other. He's ripping into the barricade. Um, Naito gets a run off the top with about three minutes left. Comes back with a drop kick, sending him out. Naito spears him into the barricade with two minutes left. Uh, they brawl in the crowd. Sonata tries the paradise lock, but can't get it in. Sonata hits a drop kick to the knee, gets back in. Naito gets in at 19. Naito gets an inside cradle. It's a Trinidad DDT at 30 seconds left. They start reversing each other's moves, and the time limit expires. Anything on the first one? Um, No. Uh, th- that neck breaker over the gate looked rough. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot that one. Yeah. Well, I'm glad because that was the one thing I could say. There you go. <laughs> um, that uh, neck breaker Naito did to Sonata over the gate looked very, very rough. There was also a Tornado DDT. That Naito did to, to Sonata looked really, really, really good. Um, but yeah, I kind of feel that this, at first I was surprised, but I felt this was the perfect way to start this match, given how the rest of it went. Very much so. So um, next we get the pairing of Taka Michinoku versus Shingo Takagi. <laughs> You immediately know Shingo Takagi is going to beat Taka in this in the, in it with an under ten minutes. I'm sorry, I love Taka, but he's a legend. Taka attacks him during his entrance. Uh, Shingo ends up running him into the barricade repeatedly. Um, mm-hmm. Dragon screw in the ropes by Taka, and he wraps laying around the post and does a post figure four. Great job there. Mm-hmm. Um, Taco ends up taking Shingo to the back. Taco comes running back at, at 13, but Shingo gets back at 19. Mm-hmm. Um, Taco gets an ankle lock uh, on Shingo, ties it to the legs, but Shingo gets to the ropes. Uh, Taco hits a PK and hits a super kick. Um, Taco gets the eye poke and hits sweet shin music and gets a two mm-hmm. count. Um, Shingo comes back with a huge lariat, almost taking his head off for two. Pumping bomber, stack power bomb for two, then into this Takagi style STF and Takamichi Noku submits at like mm-hmm. four and a half, five minutes, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Taka was uh, taking it to Shingo pretty early, launching a pretty early attack on him, trying to get, I mean, it's the Dragon, former IWGP world champion against Taka. Hmm? <laughs> Um, lots of ankle locks too. Um, by Taka on Shingo, really trying to take away the, the the leg power of the dragon, which is very smart considering he needs those to do a lot of his power moves. Um, yeah, this was a short, sweet, nice little match. Mm. So, uh, technically, Lij is up four to three right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tai Chi is in next to face Shingo. That was not a surprise for me. Uh, I figured it, if Taka is starting it with Shingo, Taichi's Tai Chi's going to finish it with Shingo. Um, you get in the kicks, run Shingo into the barricade on the floor, gets a kick t- uh, to the back in the crowd. They're brawling. Taichi runs Takagi into a post. He gets a single leg crab in the ring. 
gets the Kawada kicks. Uh, Shingo's fights back, does a fake out into the DDT. Um, Shingo does a twist and shout. The Tanahashi twist and shout for two. Mm -hmm. He fires up. Shingo goes for a power bomb, but Taichi backdrops him and gets the Enziguri. Gets a Gavin Geary in the corner, pants her off. Shingo catches a kick, hits the dragon screw. Chest kicks by Taichi, and two minutes are left. Hook kick by Taichi and the lariat by Shingo. They wrestle each other around. Taichi gets the toss or gets the uh, sumo style toss. And Shingo, but Shingo comes back, gets the ground cobra for two. They're hitting each other. They both go down. They're trading lariats. 20 seconds are left. Taichi gets a drop kick, but only gets two. And the time expires. Now, LIJ is now up three to two with, with members left. What'd you think about this one? <laughs> this was exactly what I expected out of these two guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. just hands down, this is exactly the match that I expected. Every single time they get into the ring, they do this. And it's great. Love it. Yeah. So, we move on. It's Doki versus Bushi. Bushi That's attacks, setting Doki uh, out, but, he, but Doki stops the dive. Doki gets a DDT for two. The trade ends the Bushi gets a kick to the head. Doki hits the Jorge Rivera special pin in like a minute or two into this match. Mm. And Toki gets the win. I was like, okay. Easy way to get okay. Bushi out, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's set up for the next one very, very nicely, which is what I wanted to see in this match. Oh. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, the only thing else I wanted to add to this is that Bushi's mask, very Mayu Iwatani-ish mm. to me. That nice split down the middle of the baby blue and uh, pink on the other side very much reminded me of uh, Mayu Iwatani's gear. So that was a cool little accident title, I, I mean, I guess. Mm. Um, yeah, that's all I got on this one. So Hiroma comes running out, house on, like a house on fire. No, no engine gear, nothing. He just comes running. He must have left that big eye jacket at home this week, this day, and just That's came fine. running into the ring. And they just go and starts firing off a drop kick, sending Doki out uh, and hits a drop kick off the apron. Doki hit stops the sunset flip bomb off the apron to the floor, and does like the jump up and stomp him in the chest, like on, in, onto the apron. Um, then hits a beautiful acai moonsault. Yes. Um, Doki gets the Gory special out of the corner, but Hiromu slips out, or get, he's holding the Gory special, like the Gory submission, special submission. But Hiromu slips out, but Doki gets the choke. Doki gets the chokey at five with five Doki minutes Doki. left. Uh, and Hiromu gets to the ropes. Uh, day breaks caught, and uh, he hit, and uh, Hiromu hits the death valley driver into the corner. Time bomb is countered, but Hiromu uh, sits down on the pit and gets a pin for two. Trading strikes the center. Doki gets a roll up, and then they trade pins inside an inside cradle. Uh, Hiromu hits a lit, hits the pumping bomber, but Doki comes back with his own. There's two minutes left. Hiromu with the pin, but Doki gets the ch the Doki Chowki with one minute left. Hiromu keeps fighting. He tries to reset, but Hiromu hits victory royale, but he can only get two. As they each are trying to gain advantage, the time expires. This didn't surprise me in the least. Mm -hmm. um, I knew it was coming down, and I didn't think Suji or Uemura was going to get a quick win over either Hiromu or Doki, and I didn't see Doki beating Hiromu, because that would force Uemura to beat Hiromu, and I just didn't see that happening. So, yeah, uh, I think it ended the right way to set up what we got for the final. I agree. I agree because honestly, in the entire thing, that's what I was wanting. Yeah. The whole thing. I mean, I had the combination of the other guys is great. Like seeing um, Tai Chi and Shingo was always a freaking treat. Mm -hmm. And seeing um, Doki and Hiromu, always a treat. But I am waiting for what a better showdown between Yota and Yo Yo Mura. Um, yeah. Take us into it, man. Yeah, so the time limit isn't removed for this final match. There's no time limit because we have to have a winner here. 
Mm -hmm. uh, back and forth strikes early. Suji sends Yurimura out with a head scissors, but gets cut off on the dive. Yurimura runs in barricade into the barricade into the post roll the first. This is where uh, Hikuleos is talking how Suji could get a Colgate sponsorship with the, the beautiful white teeth that he has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, Agree. And I'll, I'll say this. Hikuleo was really great, especially in this match, because he was talking mm -hmm. about his history with working with both of these guys over mm -hmm. in the USA when they were over on their excursions. They were they had, they they both came to the dojo for a while, mm -hmm. and he was working with them over in LA train when he was training with in the dojo there. I thought mm -hmm. it was just it was just great insight into these guys in talking about how how each of them differed in their young lion world, how each treated everything. It was just, it was cool to it was cool to hear the mm -hmm. Leo there. Um Guru Murray working over the arm with the hammer locks and the slams onto the arm. Uh Suji hits a, that sweet tilt the world backbreaker. Uh Suji sends Yuri Murray to the floor and finally gets a suicide dive. Uh Yuri Murray's on the mat and Suji over top, but he catches the arm in within the legs. Zack Saber Jr.'s out and snaps the arm with the legs. Looks so good. Very Zack Saber mm -hmm. Jr. esque. Um, and he works going over to work on the arm. He flatliners the leg. Um, Yurimura does that beautiful kip up that he does. Um, mm -hmm. Yurimura escapes the stomp. They trade shots, but Suji hits a flatliner. Then he hits that backbreaker, face buster, stomp combo. Uh, and hits this up kick to the face, just like kicks and just bang. And then applies the Boston Crab. Yurimura struggles and struggles. He gets to the ropes. Uh, Suji chops you and Mura. They unlaunch. They're just and then Yurim is just wailing in these chops of Suji. Suji hits just one hard strike, puts you and Mura up top. They battle back and forth up top. Suji's knocked off, but Suji dodges the dive, um, hits a power bomb, and then uh, to reverse a, power, a Hurricane Rana attempt, he reapplies the Boston Crab, hits a giant swing, and then he reapplies the Boston Crab again. But Yurimura just fights and fights. He's turned to the Lion Tamer, but eventually Suji lets go. Uh, Suji hits a stomp, misses the Gene Blaster, uh, but is hit and gets hit with an arm bar. But Suji stacks Yurimura for the pin, and they let go. And then he finally gets the Gene Blaster spear for the win. Great finale for this, and Suji looking mm -hmm. very strong here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unlike the night before, where he submitted very quickly. Mm -hmm. To that uh, arm bar, him looking very, very strong in this one. Um, Suji has got to have one of the most unique styles in professional wrestling in NGPW that I've seen in some time. It's just there, there was that one point where Yuya was running into him on the corner and he just put his foot up and just no, and like it pretty much straight kicked him down to the ground. It was so cool, but like it's. Again, that phrase that I like, that simple but effective, because it wasn't something sensational, but it was something so simple that just looked so deadly and good. Um, there was a chop that Yuya did at the on um that Suji, sorry. Um, there was a chop that Suji did early on to Yuya that was really solid, really loud, really good. Yeah, because he he cracked him and then Nurimura just came back just wailing in chops of Suji. Yeah, and and the thing I noted about that though is that the the one chop that Suji did did enough damage that it, Yuya had to turn around and react to it, and then pissed him off enough to turn around and start feeding them back. But something to note is that it took five or six chops back to match that one that Suji had done on him. So it's very interesting for me to see um the boston's has always been something that suji has been good at since his young lion days he was always just super solid and super good at getting those in and then holding them in and he's he's kind of a dick about it he like sits right down on the small arch of your back so that you can't really go anywhere mm -hmm. um just saw a very large Rottweiler just running around the room. <laughs> Sorry, got a little distracted. Um, yeah, the so yeah, the Boston's look like they are snug and very uncomfortable. And then the transition into the Lion Tamer, where he just fit that knee right in between his shoulder blades too. I was like, why'd you let that go? You were dragging him back to the center. You probably could have tapped him with that. 
Um, but then we, yeah, but then we got some more of the the end of the match here, which I actually really really liked, um, where he was able to pull off the the big swing and the gene blaster. So I, I'm glad it didn't end there, but he definitely probably would have ended it there if he wanted to. Um, that's what I got in this one. So I got post match translation from the Suji promo after um, I got it off the website. Uh, yeah. Suji referred to Yurmer's comment that they both need to be fighting for the World Heavyweight title. He said, I beat you, you beat me, nobody moves forward. Uh, so he says, on February 24th, you versus me, hair versus hair, and Yurmer accepts. So one of them's going to be bald. Um, hoping it's Yurmer. Uh, I agree. Yeah, not done though. Suji says, I have a lot I want to do here, and to do it, I need the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. The story essentially turns to Naito. Uh, Suji promises Naito that though he didn't know when, sometime soon, he would be coming to challenge Naito and to take the gold off, or, off of him. And this is all quoting, just I'm just pulling from the article on the website. After mm-hmm. holding court over not just, just five guys, but the rest of LIJ, Suji left with a mane flowing and a head held high. That is exactly mm-hmm. what came off of the New Japan's website. Oh my god, I thought it was perfection. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. The wrong team has the shampoo sponsorship when it comes to the longer hair. Suji's hair is just, that is long and luxurious. If we, hmm, we get a Suji. He's going to get Colgate, though. He's going to get Colgate. mm, We also have to remember, though, he's got that twin magic card up his sleeve also. We don't want him having to have his brother shave his head, too, because that would get confusing. But sure. um, I feel that the 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 lack of hair for Yuya might be the restart, the re-kick of the revamp that I think that he needs. Because though he did develop this character of Yuya Uemura while he was on excursion, and he did very, very well with, um, I think it was Joe Hendry over there in Impact before it became TNA again. Um I feel that the character itself in Japan is, it's missing a mark for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel that it's, maybe it's because he's in a team that where I feel like the leader already lacks so much personality and charisma that I feel like he is, by association, gaining that lack of charisma also. Um, But I would like to see him... Um, evolve a little bit in just five guys um, into something maybe I don't want to say he's exciting because he is exciting but like maybe something a little bit more mm-hmm. exciting I agree hmm. I, I need you more to change I think he's I, I his wrestling's fine I just think his character is non-existent and terrible um, so yeah yeah the character it, it needs work for sure yeah. So it's time to get out of here. Uh, you can find yes. me on the X Master on Blue Sky and Hive at that Canada Guy, TikTok, Instagram, and Threads at that Canada Dude. Facebook, you can find me at Andre Melball Wrestling Talk. Um, you can also find us if you're not watching us on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash at Andre Melball Wrestling Talk. We love the comments, we love to hear from you. So message me there. Uh, if you want to listen to us on audio form, check us out at Sunday Night's Main Event.com or on patreon.com slash SME Radio. You can get the, S- the RSS feed from there. Uh, Lots of great content going on over there uh, to cover everything from WWE to AEW to MLW. Uh, they go back in time for Continental Wrestling, lots of from CU Swifts, lots of great stuff over there. Please check that them out if you want to hear us in audio form. If you don't have time to turn YouTube on, check us out there. Give us subscribe to that feed over there. Send a nice meeting at radio.com. Those have been great friends with us. Thanks for bringing us aboard, boys. Um, you can also find me on twitch.tv slash our local establishment. You can find me doing the MC Rebound, which will be coming next Wednesday. Uh, you can find me doing the Japanese wrestling update um, with my girl Mel Ball right over here. We're talking, we're doing a lot of this in short form, talking talking some more stories from all around uh, wrestling there. So check that out. Um, and then you can also find the replays of all that stuff at youtube.com slash at our local establishment and finally our boy mike the ref uh simulcasting all our stuff you might be watching us there if you are go over to this channel give us a like if you aren't go to backbreaker video check them out youtube.com slash at backbreaker video 
You can also find Mike live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref, where he does all his AEW watch alongs there. The new Collision show will be coming. He'll be doing eight Collision watches along, so check that out. Um, also, check uh, out his gaming stuff that he does over there. And if you want replays of the gaming stuff, go to youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore gaming, where you can find uh, stuff from him, stuff from Rick Jules, stuff from PJC, and stuff from the wonderful Kayla J. Kayla J. Love Kayla J. <laughs> and Melba, where can they find you? If you're wanting to follow a Melba, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melba. You can follow her on everything else Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Melba Collins. You can also find me on our local establishments programming Japanese wrestling update with this guy over here. We're going to be going on next Friday, not this Friday, but next Friday uh, for another episode, unless something crazy chaotic happens during the week you can also find me on some spooky yuki ish on there which we're going to be coming up with very soon i'm super stoked about that so stick to the socials to find out when that's coming out you can also find me on astro pizarro's youtube channel where we do our show with ladies wrestling showcase uh we do that every couple of weeks but this girl's busy today so we're going to be doing it next week where we talk a little bit more about some of the developing stories within women's professional wrestling if you're wanting to watch NJPW, you can find it in the link. In the link, you can find the link in the description box below. It's NJPWWorld.com. It is 999 yen or approximately 10 Canadian. Shout out, Sean Spears. But it's more like 750 this month, which is Shazam. Really, really great price. Happy about that. Way cheaper than $10 and a great price to watch some amazing professional wrestling. You can watch the shows that we talked about today. And even if you aren't a member of NGBW, you can watch the February 5th show because it is free. That's right, you guys, free. So go down to that link and go check out that amazing gauntlet match that we just talked about. Check out the amazing Yoda Suchi and his very unique style set. Andre, my trusted friend and colleague, do we have anything else to say to the beautiful people? Just want to say thank you for all the support. Please keep liking the channel, subscribing to the channel, commenting down below, sharing us out to your friends, family, enemies, uh, strangers, all the different like. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Bingo. And if you're on, if you're listening to us on, SN, on SNME, please go and uh, give us a five star. Give us a uh, put some comments on Apple or. Google Play or wherever you use us, you listen to us. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. Yes. And that being said, I am your mom. over there. Is Andre. We will see you next time. Yes. Yeah.